Well, good morning. I do trust that you are enjoying our worship from home today. I'm so grateful to Bethany and uh, some of the members of the West Scotland Youth Chorus uh, for that addition to our worship this morning. Uh, I, I hope you felt the, uh, the Palm Sunday mo- moment with my hands in the air at the top of my lungs. My heart will sing out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, for our reflection this morning, we are, we're going to take a break from our uh, series of the seven words on the cross. We will uh, return to that a little later in the week. But we're going to look at a very particular passage of scripture this morning. It is, of course, Palm Sunday. And I think we would all agree that uh, this is a very different Palm Sunday uh, to what we would normally share. But this is still the day when we remember uh, what has come to be known as the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. It's that moment when Jesus, in dramatic fashion, makes a final appeal to the people of Jerusalem, this appeal of, of love. When he entered Jerusalem, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. We can see that he timed his arrival for this peak time of the year. This is the most important and significant festival in the Jewish calendar. It's Passover. Commentators tell us that the streets of Jerusalem would have been crammed with pilgrims, possibly numbering in the millions, all coming to this wonderful city for that seminal event in the life of the Jewish nation, the remembering of their deliverance from slavery in Egypt. Jesus knew what he was doing. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, he walked straight into the heart of his enemies. We know from John's Gospel that the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where Jesus was, they should let them know so that they might arrest him. So in many ways, Jesus was a marked man. Chances are he knew that. And yet still knowing that, he decides to make an entrance. You know, Not for him, the quiet nip in the back door of the city. No intention to hide away or conceal his arrival from anyone. No, Jesus deliberately chose to enter Jerusalem in a way that ensured every eye would focus on him. We can see the detailed planning of this event is hinted at in the sending of the disciples ahead to find that donkey on which he would ride into the city through the city gate, that long planned arrangement with that unnamed friend, the pre-arranged code word, the Lord has need of it. Yeah, Jesus knew what he was doing. And so he comes into the city riding the donkey into the hands of his enemies who had determined to destroy him. Now there is courage here and it's courage that goes beyond what perhaps we can honestly grasp. It's a higher courage. It's a courage of a man who sees with complete clarity what lies ahead and who, having reckoned that cost, goes on anyway. That was Jesus when he entered into Jerusalem. When he comes through the city gate to the cries of his disciples and the crowd, those Hosanna cries, those blessed is he cries, his entry is rightly called triumphal. And it was full of drama and of course full of symbolism. Uh, This was the physical enactment of a prophecy. It was a prophecy being fulfilled. And men might refuse to listen to what Jesus had to say, but they could hardly fail 
to see what he was saying. This moment conveyed a message and that message was here comes your king. It was the old prophet, Old Testament prophet Zechariah who said, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. When a king entered a city riding on a donkey, it was indicative that they came in peace. And that is Jesus' claim here to this city. He deliberately refuses the role of warrior Messiah and comes as the Prince of Peace, making an appeal. An appeal for a throne, yes, but that throne was no physical throne. It was the throne in the hearts of men. As Jesus enters Jerusalem, he says, Will you not now, even now, accept me? Accept me as your Lord and King. Enthrone me in your heart. This is the appeal of love on Palm Sunday. This is the appeal that he makes today. Will you accept me as your Lord and King? It is love's appeal on this Palm Sunday. How will you respond to that? Allow me to share a prayer. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. I respond to your appeal of royal love this day. Accept my dedicated life. Amen. And may God bless you as you welcome him into your heart and as you continue to worship from home.